In the year 18 to 9, something extraordinary happened in the windswept fossil beds of Wyoming. Othniel Charles Marsh, one of America's leading paleontologists, uncovered the partial skeleton of a massive, long-necked dinosaur. It was unlike anything he had seen before, huge, majestic, and built like a prehistoric colossus. Marsh named this creature Brontosaurus excelsus, the noble thunder lizard. The name captured imaginations instantly. Brontosaurus sounded powerful, mythical something out of ancient legend. Museums proudly displayed reconstructions of the Brontosaurus, and children stared up in awe at its long neck and massive tail. It became a symbol of dinosaurs themselves, a gentle giant from a lost world. But behind this rising fame, a scientific storm was brewing, one that would erase the Brontosaurus from textbooks for over a century. The question was no longer about bones, it was about identity. And the Brontosaurus was about to vanish, not from the Earth, but from science itself. In 1903, nearly 25 years after Brontosaurus was named, a young paleontologist named Elmer Riggs examined Marsh's fossil closely. Riggs compared it to another dinosaur Marsh had already discovered in 1807, Apatosaurus ajax. As he compared vertebrae and limb bones, Riggs came to a bold conclusion Brontosaurus and Apatosaurus were just two names for the same animal. And since Apatosaurus was named first, it had priority. Brontosaurus, he declared, was scientifically invalid. From that point forward, the name Brontosaurus was dropped in official paleontology. It was gone from journals, diagrams, and museum labels. But oddly, the public didn't get the memo. Even as science embraced Apatosaurus, the name Brontosaurus lived on in pop culture. Generations of kids still played with Brontosaurus toys and read books featuring the Thunder Lizard. It was a strange split between scientific reality and cultural myth. The Brontosaurus, it seemed, had become both extinct and immortal at the same time. Through the 20th century, Brontosaurus remained a fixture in American imagination. Children's encyclopedias, cartoons, lunchboxes, and dinosaur toys featured Brontosaurus proudly, perhaps most famously. In the 98 animated film, The Land Before Time, the gentle protagonist Littlefoot was often identified as a Brontosaurus. Never mind what the scientists said, Brontosaurus felt real. For those growing up in the 1950s, 60s, and 70s, Brontosaurus was the dinosaur that sparked wonder. It became a nostalgic icon, tied to Saturday morning cartoons, school field trips to natural history museums, and bedtime stories. The contradiction became part of the legend. Children loved Brontosaurus. While scientists politely corrected them, it created a kind of heartbreak. As adults learned that Brontosaurus never existed, many felt a strange sense of loss like a piece of childhood had been taken away. But unknown to most, scientists were quietly gathering new evidence. Brontosaurus, it turns out, might have never been gone at all. Long-necked dinosaurs or sauropods are some of the hardest fossils to study. Their skeletons are huge and often incomplete. Bones get mixed up, misidentified, or mislabeled, especially in the 19th century when paleontology was like a gold rush. Marsh himself often combined bones from multiple individuals or reconstructed skeletons based on guesswork. The Brontosaurus was no exception. In fact, its famous head was originally borrowed from another dinosaur altogether. As techniques improved and more sauropod fossils were discovered, paleontologists began to see a pattern many so-called differences between species were just the result of poor data or juvenile forms being mistaken for new animals. That's why Riggs's conclusion in 903 made sense for decades. But as new skeletons poured in from digs around the world and computer analysis became standard, paleontologists realized they could re-examine the data with more precision. And when they did, something surprising started to emerge from the bones. In 2015, a breakthrough arrived 
Emmanuel Chop, Octavio Mateus, and Roger Benson published a massive peer-reviewed study that reanalyzed the family tree of diplodocid sauropods dinosaurs like Apatosaurus and Diplodocus. They studied 477 physical traits across 81 fossil specimens. The result, a detailed cladistic analysis showing that Brontosaurus excelsus was not the same as Apatosaurus. In fact, it consistently formed a separate group with distinct neck, spine, and limb characteristics. The verdict was in Brontosaurus was real. After 112 years of exile, the thunder lizard had been scientifically revived. The news made headlines worldwide. For millions of people, it was like hearing an old friend had returned from the dead. But for the scientific community, it was a reminder that even in paleontology, knowledge evolves, and sometimes names come back. So what exactly makes Brontosaurus different from Apatosaurus? According to the 2015 study, several anatomical traits stood out. First, Brontosaurus had a taller and narrower neck than Apatosaurus, which had a broader and thicker one. The tailbones also differed. Brontosaurus's tail vertebrae were more slender. The shoulder blade and limb bones had slight but consistent variations. And even the skull, once controversial, matched better with Diplodocus-like relatives than Apatosaurus. In short, Brontosaurus wasn't just a slightly different Apatosaurus, it had its own evolutionary fingerprint. These differences, once too subtle to separate, now stood out thanks to modern computing and comparative methods. Brontosaurus had always been hiding in plain sight. Science just hadn't looked closely enough. Not everyone welcomed Brontosaurus back with open arms. Some paleontologists worried the distinction was still too slight. After all, species and genus boundaries in fossil animals are often fuzzy. But most agreed the study was well-constructed and careful. It didn't rush to conclusions. Instead, it used modern standards of evidence, including statistical analysis, to show that Brontosaurus had a unique identity. Over time, many museums and textbooks began to acknowledge the change. The name slowly returned to scientific respectability. Some researchers were even moved emotionally. Many had grown up loving Brontosaurus themselves. To see the name restored was like seeing childhood wonder validated by adult science. It was proof that sometimes dreams and data could walk side by side. Since 2015, the Brontosaurus revival has spread. Museums that once labeled displays as Apatosaurus have re-examined their collections. Some specimens once classified as Apatosaurus may now belong to Brontosaurus. Educational materials are being updated. Toy companies began reprinting the Brontosaurus name on boxes. Documentaries now mention the return of Brontosaurus as one of science's most unexpected twists. Even online encyclopedias and databases like the Paleobiology database list Brontosaurus as valid again. This isn't just about a name, it's about the power of evidence to reshape what we thought we knew. And for millions who once looked up at the skeleton of a so-called Apatosaurus and whispered, Brontosaurus, it's an emotional vindication. They weren't wrong, they were just ahead of the curve. Why does this story matter so much? Because it's not just about dinosaurs. It's about the human connection to knowledge. For many viewers over 40, Brontosaurus is more than a name, it's a memory. It reminds them of flipping through picture books, lining up at museum field trips, and asking their parents about giant creatures that once roamed the earth. When Brontosaurus was taken away, it left a gap in the narrative of their youth. Its return brings joy, but also respect for the way science can admit it was wrong and update itself. That's a powerful message for all ages. We grow wiser not by clinging to the past, but by learning from it. And in this case, science brought something back to life, at least in name and spirit. Today, Brontosaurus is back, not just in museums, but in hearts. It remains a symbol of discovery, mystery, and the evolving journey of scientific truth. It proves that even giants can be lost and found again. For scientists, 
It's a testament to the power of rigorous analysis and open-mindedness. For the public, it's a moment of celebration and closure. And for those who grew up loving Brontosaurus, it's a reminder that some legends never truly die. They just wait for the right time to return. So next time you walk through a natural history museum and see that towering neck stretching toward the ceiling, smile. Brontosaurus is no longer a mistake. It's real. It always was. When the news of Brontosaurus' scientific revival broke in 2019, it wasn't just paleontologists who paid attention. Major newspapers, science magazines, and even morning talk shows covered the story with enthusiasm. Headlines read, Brontosaurus is back and the dinosaur you loved as a kid is real again. The public reaction was overwhelmingly joyful. Comment sections filled with nostalgia. People shared memories of drawing Brontosaurus in school, naming their stuffed dinosaurs Bronto, or pretending to be one while stomping across their backyard. Teachers who once had to correct students about the name could now smile and say, actually, you were right all along. This kind of scientific update is rare, where data and dreams align so perfectly. For many, it was a small but powerful moment of validation, proof that science can admit its past while still moving forward. And it reminded people that even in adulthood, wonder is not something we have to leave behind. The story of Brontosaurus offers something else too, an elegant example of how science actually works, for older audiences especially. This is a powerful reminder that science isn't about being right all the time. It's about building knowledge through evidence, adjusting our understanding as new information comes to light. In the 1900s, scientists made the best judgment they could with the fossils and tools available. They weren't wrong to retire the name Brontosaurus. It simply fit the data at the time. But when better methods and broader fossil collections became available, scientists revisited the question. And they found something new. That's not failure, that's progress. Science evolves. The Brontosaurus story encourages people to trust that evolution of thought and to see rethinking not as weakness, but as wisdom. It's a message especially resonant with people who've seen how many ideas change across a lifetime, socially, politically, and yes, scientifically. Why does a name matter so much? After all, Brontosaurus and Apatosaurus were similar animals, but names are powerful. They shape how we remember things, how we feel about them, how we connect to history. For decades, the name Brontosaurus was etched into culture, art, and memory. Losing it felt like rewriting personal history. That's why its return meant more than taxonomic correctness. It was about reclaiming a symbol. Brontosaurus isn't just a dinosaur. It's a reminder of childhood awe, of field trips, of science class, of the thrill of learning something ancient and mysterious. Its revival touched a nerve not just because it was right, but because it felt right. It shows us that science doesn't just live in labs and journals, it lives in people. And sometimes, honoring that emotional truth matters just as much as the data behind it. Brontosaurus's return also fits into a larger trend, the modern reevaluation of dinosaurs. Over the past few decades, our picture of dinosaurs has dramatically changed. We now know many had feathers, were warm-blooded, and were far more active and intelligent than once believed. The so-called dinosaur renaissance, beginning in the mid-70s, reshaped dinosaurs from slow-moving reptiles to dynamic, complex creatures. The Brontosaurus revival is part of that revolution. It reminds us that even the most iconic species aren't immune to revision. This is especially meaningful for those who grew up with old ideas scaled, tail-dragging monsters, and now get to witness how much richer and more accurate the story has become. It's a living example of how science continuously rewrites what we thought we knew, and why that process is worth celebrating. Today, 
A new generation is being introduced to Brontosaurus, not through outdated textbooks, but through updated science. Parents and grandparents who once marveled at Brontosaurus as children can now share that same wonder with their kids and grandkids, this time with the comfort of knowing the name is valid. Museums are reprinting labels, science kits proudly include Brontosaurus figures, and new documentaries celebrate its return. This isn't just nostalgia, it's connection. It's passing down the torch of curiosity and reminding younger viewers that science isn't static. It grows, evolves, and sometimes surprises even the experts. In Brontosaurus, we find a story that bridges time not just millions of years of prehistory, but the decades of human discovery and cultural memory that followed. Its story is long, winding, and full of turns. But in the end, it proves that the things we love most are never truly gone. They're just waiting to be rediscovered.